All right, uh, Dr. Linquist, thanks for thanks for joining me. I, I appreciate it. Um, just to, again, just in case an, uh, another writer picks it up, can you just say your first and last name spelled out for us? Give us your title. Yeah, it's Scott Lindquist, L-I-N-D-Q-U-I-S-T, M-D, M-P-H. I'm the acting state health officer for Washington State Department of Health. Okay. Um, Dr. Lindquist, I, I, don't know if, I don't know how much heads up you got on the story that I'm working on today, um, but we're kind of talking, you know, about, you know, so many people getting the vaccine now. People are thinking about maybe will things go back to normal? There's like a tourism group, a bunch of travel groups that are pushing actually the White House um, for people who are, who are fully vaccinated to travel once again, to travel internationally once again. Um, just what are your thoughts about that? Well, you know, I think it's, it's a complicated history. Back in November of last year, Inslee, uh, Governor Inslee put this travel advisory into place that was really one of the first ones in the country where we had to quarantine for 14 days after travel and avoid, I mean, the main message back then was avoid non-essential travel. And now uh, this past weekend, uh, the governor has rescinded this order and defers to the CDC guidance. Now, that CDC guidance is cautious and they're cautious for a very good reason. We are starting to see an uptick in cases across the United States we are actually starting to see some increases in cases here. So uh, while I'm cautiously optimistic, it does not look like uh, the end of this pandemic yet, but the travel requirements uh, now from the CDC are really encouraging people to get vaccinated. They're also encouraging the safety net of getting tested one to three days before you travel. You, you still have to wear a mask whether you're vaccinated or not. Uh, when you're in public places and and still the recommendations to wash your hands, avoid uh, crowds and six foot distancing, and then get tested after you return from wherever you went three to five days. Um, and then you still got to quarantine whether you're vaccinated or not. So these guidance from the CDC, CDC still is pretty unconservative and does not take into place the the vaccination. We are starting to see uh, countries around the world, though, starting to put restrictions on those that are not vaccinated. So, for example, I really want to go to Sweden and, and uh, Iceland. Iceland has uh, just announced on the 26th uh, that they will allow travelers from the U.S. if you're vaccinated. A lot of um, airline companies are really talking about, should we have some sort of a passport for vaccination? So uh, clearly the way to go for travel in the future is going to be for those that are vaccinated are going to have less restrictions. So while there's nothing official yet in the U.S., a lot of countries around the world are putting these kind of restrictions on non-vaccinated uh, persons. So in essence, what you're, what you're saying is that people should still be careful, right? People should still, you know, do all the precautions, like just, just like during the, the peak of the pandemic uh, just a few months ago. If I'm if I'm, if I'm reading you correctly. Yeah, absolutely. People still yeah. need to be very cautious. Uh, I do not think we are out of the woods yet. In terms of let's, let's play, you know, let's play the person who is fully vaccinated. Um, can they travel? Can they just, can they just live life normally? Can they go to Iceland or Sweden uh, at this point uh, once, once uh, things open up a little bit? I mean, what do you think about that? Well, I think, you know, the CDC is still saying, hey, we're not really um, encouraging travel unless it's essential. So you really have to question whether your travel is really worth putting yourself at risk or others at risk. If you're fully vaccinated, there still is this concern that you can get exposed, infected, be a carrier, not be very symptomatic and pass this on to somebody else. So it's really not just about you anymore. It's about protecting those around you. So, um, you know, in my case, if I look at Sweden, the incidence of COVID is so high. No, I would not travel to Sweden right now myself, even though it's on my travel list. Um, yes, I'm fully vaccinated. I would still have to wear a mask. I'd still have to be tested. And I'd still have this concern that I'm going into a country with very high incidence of COVID. Uh, Iceland's a different story. They don't have quite as high a, a uh, rate, but that's what a traveler is going to need to do. They're going to have to look at the country they're going to and find out what are the requirements of that country for allowing them into the country, if at all. 
um, Americans are not allowed into all countries and vaccinated or not. So it's still uh, very early in the game for opening up, even if you're vaccinated. So even, even if you are fully vaccinated, there, you can still carry COVID to others. Is that, is that correct? Or? Yeah, that, that's the concern. We don't have really yeah. good data on it. Yes, we have seen uh, cases where people are fully vaccinated and get infected and don't have a lot of symptoms, but still we're able to isolate the virus from them. So yes, it's, it's more than theoretical. It is happening around the country. How much that's happening how much that would uh, apply to a traveler who is completely healthy, that's all very unknown at this point. And that's why the CDC is being so conservative. Uh, so, you know, you know when, if, if you're fully vaccinated, what message do you want for people who are just itching to go travel uh, before asking the next set of questions here? What, what message do you want to get across? Yeah, the message I'd say is about the community. It's not about your personal travel. You need to protect the community. You need to hold up on any travel unless it's absolutely necessary. Yes, being vaccinated will probably get you some uh, ability to travel better, but just not right now. Uh, Dr. Linquist, can I also talk to you about, um, I did a story a couple days ago about the AstraZeneca vaccine. I know there's still a lot of data that still has to come out about it. I just want to get your thoughts about, you know, the, the safety of this. Um, do, do you agree with Dr. Fauci that overall it's a very you know, it's a, it appears to be a safe vaccine. I mean, what are your thoughts about this particular one? Yeah, I think there are safeguards in place here in the United States that you go through um, advisory committees, you um, go through the FDA to get approved. Those take a very careful and uh, thorough look at your, your data. And so I trust in that system. Yes, I understand what Dr. Fauci is saying overall. It appears to be a very safe and effective vaccine, but I think it needs to go through the regular channels before we all accept it in the public health system. And one more question. Is there a particular vaccine now that we mentioned, you know, AstraZeneca possibly being in the mix here? I mean, do you, is there, is, I mean, is that the one that is probably the most concerning as opposed to Johnson and Johnson, Pfizer, Moderna, or is it, you just have to go through the same protocols? I mean, what do you? Yeah, I think the other three have FDA uh, EUAs or emergency use authorizations. They've been uh, reviewed by the advisory committee in immune practices. And, and uh, I think those are the three that are um, offered to the public. Uh, AstraZeneca um, can go through the same process. And yeah, it'll yeah. be on the same footing. And, and the best vaccine out there, by the way, is the one you can get. Right. You know, we've, been, we've been hearing that uh, quite a bit. Uh, and then, I mean, what, do you, what are we expecting? I, you mentioned it briefly, but just to touch upon it again, I mean, what are we expecting here over the next month when it comes to COVID? Are we seeing it? less and less? Do we, do we see another spike happening in the near future? What are you guys predicting? Yeah, so here's a concern. If I look at the, the number of cases since the very beginning of this, and remember, my team diagnosed the very first case in the United States. So I've been at this for longer than almost anybody else in the country. And what I'm concerned about is you're seeing this first uh, wave back in March of last year. And then it goes down to a baseline and that baseline is at a certain level. Then we get a second wave and it comes back down to a baseline that's higher than the first. And that seeds the very next wave, which is the third wave. And that third wave appears to be settling out at an even higher baseline than the two waves before. There's a couple subtle things we see early when another wave is coming, like we see an increase in cases in younger folks, 20 to 40, we're seeing that again. We're seeing a lot of restrictions opening. We're seeing spring break. We're seeing the emergence of a lot of variants that we're detecting around the country. So yeah, I, I am very concerned. We're uh, standing in the way of a fourth wave that's coming soon. Yeah, we just did a story about the the younger younger folks, the, especially young athletes. From what I heard, they're they're ones that are that are are you know getting this next wave. What's the reason behind that? Is that just because it's just catching up to the, these younger kids, or it's just part of the wave? Yeah, I think or, it's complex. It's uh, yeah, who is going out to bars and restaurants? Who's working in bars and restaurants? Who's not wearing their mask? All these things that we know control the uh, pandemic social distancing, mask wearing, and not congregating, 
that is an age group that is really starting to open up. All right, Dr. Lindquist, thank you for your time. I appreciate it this morning. Thanks a lot. Okay. Have a good day. Yep. Bye.